Now, it's my great pleasure to introduce someone who has already impressed me with his immensely deep and philosophical way of thinking. He's studying to do a Bachelor of Science in Political Science at the University of the West Indies, and he lives in Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm sure you know Trinidad and Tobago is a combination of two islands, 1.4 million people, 80% of its economy coming from oil and gas, a wealthy community and yet struggling with many social dilemmas as a result of poor education for the bottom part of its communities and sometimes difficult unemployment. Now, this guy has got an amazing three names, which I'll tell you what they mean towards the end. But while he's here, he's missing out on doing his morning radio show. He's been a television presenter in his country, and every morning for three hours, he holds politicians to account. So he doesn't just get to study what they think, he also gets to question them, and he gets to pursue their minds and to understand whether they can hold their country towards greater things. He's also held the role as chairman of the Youth Congress, of the Youth Congress Party, which is the party that's in government, in coalition at the moment. And so he holds a view which allows him to understand how politics ought to work for a part of the world that ought to be living in privilege and wealth and freedom, but struggles to a certain extent because it can't combine the right aspects of its philosophy with some of its outcomes. So here is the amazing Kieran Joseph Samaru. His name, first name Kieran Irish, means wise and dark, and he's living up to that in both senses of the word. And <laughs> he allowed me to say that. I suppose it's pretty much fair. Uh, Joseph, which he says is a biblical Hebrew name, means majestic, and also Samaru is soldier and prince. So welcome the majestic soldier and prince who's wise and dark. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lord Hastings. And just as you would welcome me, could I please have a round of applause for my counselor, Lord Hastings, who is one of your very own here in the United <laughs> Kingdom. Backstage, backstage, she made me feel so welcome. And now I am so at ease speaking with all of you. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to you. Because you are future presidents. You are future prime ministers. And in case you didn't realize, you are future game changers. And I want to express my concern to you over the high level of youth apathy towards politics and government. Historically, in my country of Trinidad and Tobago, there have been two major political parties, each representing one of the two major races. This race-based, tribal-based politics has fostered social tensions lack of objectivity, mudslinging, and top-down government. Many youth choose to stay away from politics, believing that the political systems will always be corrupt and that governments will also always be corrupt as well. Others see senior politicians resistant to change, more concerned about holding on to their own power and defending their own space rather than opening up their parties to creative ideas, to new generations as ours, and to successful succession planning strategies. In Trinidad and Tobago, some political parties have taken specific steps towards ensuring that young people have a greater place in their political parties. Our party established the Youth Congress to engage and involve young people specifically in politics. This Youth Congress has some protected representation throughout the party. Our 2010 election manifesto theme was actually led by young people. We have also advocated having more candidates under the age of 35 at local elections, county elections, and at general elections nationally, and for having a youth representative at each level and committee in the party. This has been met with some resistance because many people discount the value of having us young people involved, and this causes us young people to also devalue ourselves as key agents in the political process. But we continue to make strides forward. Stacey Ruplerine became the youngest MP in Trinidad and Tobago in the year 2010 at the age of 26, and we expect to have many more young candidates in the 2015 general election. 
If we don't address the issues responsible for youth apathy towards politics, we will be driving away an entire generation from assuming the responsibilities that they have towards developing community, country, and world. This, our technology-savvy generation, we could re revolutionize the spread of information, we could revolutionize the efficiency of government and also government's engagement of people. But we may be keeping our political parties and our community organizations closed to an intelligent, informed generation with newer ideas, with more creativity, which will fuel more competitiveness and greater collaboration on local and global platforms. If youth are to be involved in politics, we must insist that community and the national leaders adopt higher standards of behavior and enforce stronger accountability and transparency measures. This will set the stage for youth to want to play a greater role in shaping their future rather than leaving it simply to chance. Young people want to be part of cleaner, clearer politics, not compromised politics of the past. But we all have our part to play. I call on each of us here today to make sure that at least one organization, political organization or community organization, of which we know, increases and protects and mandates some level of youth participation rather than leaving it to chance. The time for much political talk must be backed up by practical work. Let us build on this, on our man force, our man power of youth, and in so doing, we can fulfill even greater the potential of our communities, of our countries, of our world, and fulfill the potential of our future. I thank you.